Okay, uh, good afternoon everybody and welcome from sunny old London. Um, this is Kinesis and the team um, that are putting together just a little webinar just to touch base um, to give you some really important updates. Uh, we'd like to thank you for joining us today. Um, it's a highly anticipated event, this one. We've got a lot going on um, and uh, everybody's going to cover off uh, a little piece uh, to give you an update. So um, I'm going to hand over to our panelists today, or one of our panelists, uh, Mr. Andrew McGuire. And uh, Andy's going to uh, just give us a little bit of an intro and uh, say hello to you all. Okay, over to you, Andy. Yeah, great. I'm just looking at the, uh, the, the uh, list here. Great to meet you all. I can see many longtime friends have joined us today uh, for this very important update. Now, as many of you know, I'm very proud to be associated with Kinesis, and it's absolutely fabulous that we see our journey on track for the launch of the game-changing Kinesis monetary system. Now, for our gold and silver friends, this has been quite a journey. We've always knew that one day the physical market would overrun the insider run synthetic market price setting mechanisms. But what really excites me as a 40 year gold market veteran is that Kinesis is going to accelerate the determining of a true fair market price for physical precious metals. Now, <clears throat> literally billions of dollars of physical gold and silver is required to monetize a global monetary system like can the Kinesis currency. And we have the necessary, well-proven institutional grade platform and the necessary liquidity to do so. So that's a really important component. But I also know that many joining us today come from the crypto blockchain space. And I consider it our privilege to witness our two worlds coming seamlessly together. Now, Kinesis brings an important element to the trustless blockchain. Now, a global currency that is backed by the oldest and most respected currency known to man, gold and silver. Now, it brings stability to both our worlds. Now, whichever way, uh, whichever world we come from, we really, uh, you know, at what, what I really view as a momentous point in history, Never before have we, the people, been given the currency that enables us to, to take back control of what is a global broken banking system. Now, many of my clients, both large and small, as well as a host of others, have found and joined us. Even though we've done, well, I will attest to this, we've done almost little in the way of, almost nothing in the way of marketing. And all of the people who've come on board ahead of the upcoming currency launch to take advantage, what they're taking advantage of is the very attractive Kinesis Velocity, Velocity Token offering, the KVT. Now, if you've not yet participated, please come and join us. So I've taken enough time. I'm over to you, Tom, or uh, to Jai. Thanks a lot, Andy. Um, always a pleasure, everyone, and thank you very much for tuning in once again. It's been a little while since we connected. So, uh, and I'm sure there's a lot of questions out there and we'll do our best to, um, you know, answer as many questions as possible, but we do also have a limited amount of time. I also want to um, do the honour of introducing you to a few of our new team members that are actually on the call, um, in particular, Patrick Davis and also Nigel Owens. So Nigel joins us as our um, new CTO. Um, you know, his reputation speaks for himself um, and I'll, I'll hand it over to him shortly, but he comes across um, from, well, um, a, a very rich background in both the exchange space, also uh, like the banking, finance and blockchain space as well. So it really touches all the relevant areas um, that, are, that are really important for us. Also, um, Patrick, he also comes across from um, exchange and um, finance background, being the head of legal for um, ICE, so Intercontinental Exchange in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in, um, based out of the UK. And um, um, he's been a, um, a welcome addition to the team and has really hit the ground running and got involved in all the various different areas uh, of uh, of contention and and uh, with it within the with, with within the organisations really sort of helped us out um, with regards to a number of different things that we'll get into shortly. Um, 
So yeah, they're the new additions in our executive committee, let's put it that way. And um, they've certainly sort of, you know, added significantly to the depth of our organization. Um, you know, and we feel, we actually feel very honored to attract such talent as a startup organization. Just, just remember that we're actually a startup. We're not a well-established um, company with, um, well, in this case of Kinesis, um, with uh, a, a long proven track record. We're, we're starting this thing up from scratch. We're building everything from scratch pretty much. So um, let me sort of uh, get into it a little bit. Firstly, I mean, from my perspective um, and what, what I want to talk about today is, um, well, obviously I'm going to run through um, how we're progressing from a developmental standpoint. And this is really the most important thing. Um, ultimately, are we on track to launch um, as, as stated by May? Um, the answer to that is yes, we're on track to, to launch um, our, our first phase um, core functionality and system by that time. And I'll go into different sort of elements um, and functions incorporated um, into our overall system and how we're progressing and let the team sort of comment as well. Um, and also how we're progressing from a, uh, a partnership perspective as well. So um, it astounds me every day, the, uh, the conversations that I have surrounding our system. Really, it is um, quite phenomenal. And th these conversations are being had at um, all different levels. Level, whether it be the corporate institutional level, or also just, you know, like private investor level as well. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really proud to report that there's conversations being had at all different levels and the deals that are being done and um, the progress that's happening at the governmental and institutional level. Um, for a startup company, it, it certainly has exceeded my expectations. I don't know about your expectations, but um, all my expectations have certainly been blown away. And how these conversations are being had um, yeah, certainly it, it's, uh, it's, it's very honoring to be having these conversations and been doing these deals at these different levels. But for a startup company, it's something um, really profound and it really shows, I think, the, uh, the, the, the state of the industry. I mean, this industry, the blockchain industry, um, and how we've married it up with the old established like money, universal money effectively, it, um, it's, it's sort of proven that our model is right. And we have a model that is appropriate um, at the governmental and corporate level. So obviously, as Andy was saying, and as I've said many times before, you know, like we've got the, we've got the greatest store of value, the greatest money that the world's ever seen, and we've brought it into, you know, the, the most efficient global system that the world's ever seen. And then once again, um, added on that sort of third dimension of incentivizing everyone to actually participate in the system. And to see that model like come to fruition, become a reality and move away from just being sort of a, a high in the sky vision is, is something very rewarding for both myself and our team. And um, and I think for everyone participating in the system, it will be extremely rewarding for you as well from many different perspectives. Um, one, seeing all of our vision sort of come to reality and two, to actually, you know, make some money out of it as well, be rewarded for our participation in it. So um, on the technology side, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased to be able to announce to you that we're progressing very, very well and um, what Nigel has done um, with the team has, it's been um, very impressive. Um, and I'll hand, it, I'll hand it over to him now and I'll, I'll, I'll make a brief comment after he finishes. So Nigel, um, welcome and uh, yeah, I'll hand it over to you now. Thank you very much, Tom, and uh, welcome to everybody on the webinar. <clears throat> Um, yeah, we are progressing, as, as Tom has mentioned. Uh, we are making um, good headway. Uh, we are on track for uh, our March release of the minting process functionality. 
um, there are many aspects of that which you know we 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 need to we we have delivered on a testing now fully regression testing the KAU side of the network the KAG side of the network KCX itself the wallet the minting application end to end its settlements and emission processes and the actual physical for digital aspects of it all of this um, is 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 on track and and, and ready for march and uh, that will be a, a significant release for us um, it's it, we're excited about that um, the team are, are working well for that but there are also other aspects of the team that are working ahead and are starting to you know move push well into the other aspects of the uh, monetary system um, areas that are required on those the api sets we are almost complete upon um, the apis are important to us because obviously they're the core um, calls for the system but also for third party integrations uh, for later dates so we have interfaces which third parties can connect into and uh, exchange we can swap information between and transactions in a seamless fashion um, so we are we are making great headway with that we continue to strengthen our team um, so we're enhancing our capability and reducing our risk within any aspects if we have any, I don't believe we do. Um, so we are looking uh, and continue to to extend our uh, technology base staff. Uh, and what is very promising about that is the people we are talking to um, have been uh, online. They have spoken to people in the industry uh, as well as doing their own research. And they are too very excited to be joining the team. Um, it's actually quite nice to be working within uh, a business where um, I, I come in on the morning and uh, I open my inbox and I see people pushing CVs to us saying, you know, this is a great idea. Do you need our services? How can we help? Uh, we believe you are uh, breaking new ground. So that's, uh, I think that speaks a lot for the business model itself uh, and also for the technologies we're using and how we're going to interface with the markets in general. Um, we are also moving to uh, into a phase where we are going to start engaging with third parties to audit what we are doing and delivering so we can continue the high quality and give the uh, user base the public the assurance uh, of what we are doing is 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 best practice that we are not missing any functionalities uh that what we are delivering and what we will be delivering um is of top quality you know two major aspects that we we we, we will audit which are extremely important are the deposits and withdrawals the crypto side as well as the actual core exchange functionality itself as soon as we start getting those reports in um it's it's almost like it's a validation it's a sanity check that we are doing all the right things at all the right times um, so that's that's very exciting while well, I'm talking with companies about uh, getting involved in that engagement um, the actual uh, technology itself uh, again because we forked it off um, uh, a branch of Stella um, it's it's proved tried and tested we've added our own and unique pieces to it um, and it's performing outstandingly well I mean we are doing uh, order match load testing on it we are doing all those sort of things and it's just it's outstanding the results we're getting we are extremely pleased not that we ever expected uh, not to be pleased but it's nice to be able to see what we expected is at least being matched but in 99% of that is being exceeded and exceeded significantly so uh, I'm hoping that by the way stuff I'm explaining to you guys should be giving you the um, the feeling of we are on track we are doing everything to, to timeline uh, we are exceeding our expectations with the quality uh, and the delivery of, uh, of code and applications for the monetary system so uh, I'm in a very happy place um, and I believe my colleagues are too we will continue on this uh, track uh, and uh, it's a very exciting time I think uh, the world will be quite surprised in what we delivered when it comes along so um, I thank you very much for your time uh, and if you do have questions, I'm, they will all be collated at some point. I'm sure the relevant ones will come back to me and I can feed them into the machine. But um, thank you for your time. Um, and uh, I'll hand back to Tom. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Nigel. That's, uh, that's greatly appreciated.
And um, yeah, it's worthwhile mentioning as well that Nigel is in the process of building out our IT team um, in in various different locations around the world. At the moment, we're beefing up the team in um, in London, and also um, you know um, looking at other uh, locations around the world to potentially um, add to. So we're on a rapid recruitment process and uh, expansion at this point um, to help increase the velocity from a developmental perspective and to, to, to maintain that sort of development and velocity going forward. There'll be constant development in what we're doing and expansion as we add new functionality and new modules into everything that we're doing. You know, um, yes, we're, we're um, launching in May, but, you know, everything is going to keep on developing and new functionality uh, will be coming online at different points in time as we go forward into the future. Okay, so um, moving on now, um, let's talk about the Kinesis debit card, which we have some very exciting news on, um, and you're going to hear it much more shortly. Um, but uh, who's been sort of um, heading up that project to a certain degree is Mr. Ryan Case, um, our Chief Commercial Officer who's also uh, um, on the line. Ryan, should I hand it over to you um, for you to comment on how, how we're going with the debit card and where, what exactly ha is happening there? Yeah, thank you, Tom. And um, yeah, great to be here today. And thanks for all those uh, that are listening. Um, from the uh, sales and commercialization side of the business, it's been a, a big few weeks, certainly. Uh, as many have seen, we've uh, recently released a product preview um, and we've had a great response to this. So it's been great to show everyone a preview of the technology that we've got coming. And excitingly, next up, we've got the Kinesis debit card. So we're very close um, to getting this card out by our partners, Unified Signal, uh, and it's gonna be under the brand uh, of Kinesis Pay. Initially, we're gonna get this live um, to US residents only, and only for funding and spending in US dollar terms. We've decided to do this so that we can get these cards in the hands of our community as soon as possible and to show that we've already got all the required elements in place to start rolling out our Kinesis debit card. Then from the launch of the Kinesis monetary system in May 2019, we're going to be integrating the gold and silver elements with Kinesis Pay via the Kinesis monetary system, allowing for the spending and the integration of the currencies on the card. So these two things, Kinesis Pay and Kinesis Monetary System, are effectively two separate applications, right? We've got the, the but providing the same sort of debit card element. So we've got the, the Kinesis Monetary System communicating with Kinesis Pay via an API, such as um, Nigel's been referring to earlier from the tech elements. So getting this additional Kinesis Pay uh, technology live allows us to potentially bring in clients from Unified Signal's extensive corporate client base um, because you know these, these clients may already have their technology live with them. So we're also now going to be working to add more supported regions um, you know, in line with our expansion timeline, so outside of the US. So those are our next steps there too. Okay. Is I finished, yeah, Ron? That's, that's, that's me. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot for that. Um, yeah, so just to sort of sum up what Ryan is saying there, effectively what we're doing, everyone, is we're, we're about to have a solution live in the very near future. And um, we'll have a um, dedicated, like, website or web page up for the for Kinesis Pay. Um, Jai can probably comment further in a little bit. Um, and, uh, and, and people will be able to go there. US residents or citizens will be able to, not US residents will be able to go there, actually sign up for a card. Yes, it's not, it's not, um, in, it doesn't have the gold and silver currencies interfaced in at this point in time, but at least it shows a, a, a live functioning um, Kinesis Pay debit card then everyone um, who has that card in the future um, uh, will be able to obviously be interfaced into our extended integrated solution. But it, it shows that we're, you know, we got something live, we're getting actual users into the system, um, people using the card, 
Um, we'll be getting, you know, market feedback, everything like that um, very, very soon. So this is a little surprise, I guess, launch that's happening. Um, we're about to go live with a solution. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's, that's exciting. Okay, next up is uh, the Kinesis Blockchain Exchange. Now, um, as, as we sort of touched on um, from our sort of holistic overview from a technological standpoint, um, we're on track for this to be um, live with its sort of, you know, first phase form in May from a technology standpoint. Um, but also we've been busy analyzing jurisdictions um, around the world um, in which to actually domicile this actual business unit. So um, for everyone who's familiar with Kinesis, we really have various different like business units um, within our system. And for risk mitigation purposes, they should all be incorporated into different entities. So uh, in the case of the Kinesis Blockchain Exchange, um, we've been um, analyzing like which jurisdiction is best for that um, and uh, and spearheading that, um, I guess, analysis um, it has been uh, Patrick Davis, um, our new general counsel. And um, so I'll, I'll hand it over to him to actually comment on the uh, Kinesis Blockchain Exchange um, domicile. Patrick? Great. Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be here to have the opportunity to sort of give you an update as to where we've got to in relation to the Kinesis Blockchain Exchange or KB as we describe it internally. So people will no doubt be aware of uh, ramping up in the regulatory focus on the crypto asset space. Looking at last year, the uh, HMT, um, Bank of England and FCA Joint Task Force undertook a, a study into um, crypto assets and certainly the FCA issued a consultation document um, earlier on this year in relation to crypto assets and further ESMA have been um, offering advice in relation to ICOs and crypto assets. Oh, sorry, my, my camera is being readjusted to ensure that my uh, full <laughs> beauty is shared with the nation. So uh, <laughs> no, there you go. So. Well, within this within this context, um, we've been undertaking a lot of um, analysis. We've been engaging with uh, external counsel, with relevant regulators, getting a sense of uh, the way in which these different national um, reg regulators are looking to put in place bespoke national res regimes for crypto assets. It's been a long and involved process. Um, you'll all be aware of the different publicity around the different jurisdictions. But our, what we've been doing is being motivated by ensuring that we're going to have a good um, regulated product available at launch in May. Um, we're looking to sort of analyze jurisdictions based upon the level of regulatory engagement, opportunity for licensing and similar, um, the, the sort of user friendliness of the regulatory environment, uh, the, the, the timings associated with consideration of different applications and turnaround an issue of licenses the geographical location and the familiarity of the jurisdiction and the sort of established crypto digital currency interest within the jurisdictions. So it's been a long and involved um, exercise. It's taken in a number of different jurisdictions, but it's been very interesting, very enjoyable. And it's been a, a rewarding experience engaging with external counsel and um, local regulators as well to get insights and a sense of um, excitement that's really out there as well in relation to this sort of product. Um, so we're hoping to be able to announce in the next uh, couple of weeks a sort of decision and um, giving more detail around timelines and similar uh, at that stage. So I think that gives concludes my overview, um, but any questions that come in, I'll look to sort of respond to as appropriate. Thanks a lot for that, Patrick. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, and, and we'll provide further um, further analysis and further commentary on this in the near future. We're about to make a final decision and we're very happy with this final decision. And um, so we'll be able to provide, you know, more commentary on, I guess, the full corporate framework and how it will look in the very, very near future. 
Okay, so um, so moving on now. Um, let me just bring something up here. Um, what do we have next? Jai, um, you have the the structure more at hand, perhaps. So sure. ah, so yeah, I'm yeah, that's right. Moving on to um, address a question that has been given to us a few times actually um, over the last little while, and really want to nip this in the bud so everyone understands our position internally here, and so you can understand as well. Um, and I'll I'll just provide a very brief comment from my perspective, and then hand it over to Jai because. Um, he can provide a significant amount of color on this. Okay, so um, as everyone knows that, okay, even for, you know, uh, in 2018, I guess uh, the crypto market started the year with a bang and then really petered off, like uh, really sort of died. Let's put it that way, with some down like 95%. Despite all of that, um, during our pre-sale, we were able to sell around $55 million or whatever it was of KVTs. And then since then, um, we've, we've nudged up to around $60 million. And that is without any real concerted effort at all to market. Um, you know, we've done some interviews, we've got, attended a few conferences, um, nothing, too, nothing too crazy. And we've done a, just a little bit of marketing. Now, um, and and just really, I, I would say more so through word of mouth has, you know, there been, you know, I, 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 we've spread that way. Now, with regards to the KVTs, as, as most people on here would understand, we are really quite different and unique in, in um, the crypto slash blockchain space. One, to buy a KVT is a thousand dollars, thousand US dollars, which is much more than, you know, the other coins out there, which in many cases are less than a dollar. So in that case, you know, all these small coins, they go out and they try to get like every mum and dad and whomever, all the crypto speculators from all around the world to invest in. We've really targeted a different kind of investor, a more sophisticated um, and professional type of investor to come in and to understand our system because our system is very, very sophisticated. Um, and um, with that, as you know, we've raised enough capital to date to, to meet our vision. Um, and what everyone needs to understand is the amount of uh, KVT investors is not in any way, shape or form illustrative of um, buy-in or support for the system um, that we will be launching. Now, we have the, the um, and this is, I'm about to hand it over to, to Jai, but to market a KVT investment is something very different to market the Kinesis blockchain system, uh, well, monetary system, I'm sorry, because to sell, to get someone to, you know, basically invest at least 1,000, um, and, you know, a lot of people out there in the world cannot even afford 1,000, so they're uh, immediately eliminated. Um, but into a new industry, um, they, they need to, to a certain degree, um, speculate. Um, a lot of people don't have the time to understand the system in its entirety and uh, understand whether it's a good investment to risk their capital on. That's a very different kind of decision um, and a very different acquisition cost um, um, from a marketing perspective than it is to subscribe to a system which improves um, and makes everyone life easier, which is the monetary system and banking system that we're about to offer. They don't need to risk capital and uh, um, they, they can be rewarded for it as well. So they're two very, very different decisions to make. And from a um, um, customer acquisition or investor acquisition perspective, they have very different costs. So the, the costs of acquiring a KVT investor from a um, marketing perspective are infinitely higher. So um, yeah, we can go out and market to the masses now, but Every single investor that we bring in, it costs money because you've got to market. 
Um, we've got to spread the word, whether it be from a PR perspective, from a marketing perspective. And we've got all of our functions set up in a way where we're able to analyze um, all the different demographics and geographic regions and what it actually costs to acquire different customers. And we're, we're at a place where we've got enough capital. So we're, we're going to keep acquisition costs low for um, customers. Um, and, uh, you know, because they're going to be so much lower, infinitely lower when it comes to the monetary system. I mean, for example, we've done partnership deals, which I'll get into in a second, that bring online millions of users into the monetary system. Um, these partnership deals equate to over 100 million users coming into that monetary system. Um, I mean, it's, it's just a significantly different type of user or investor. Let's put it that way. So anyway, I've probably said enough on that. Let me hand it over to Jai to comment just from the marketing perspective and uh, to give you insight there. Jai, over to you, buddy. Sure. Thanks, Tom. I mean, there's not really much more to say on that. Um, oh, other sorry. Than the fact. <laughs> uh, that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> I mean, look, it, it, it comes down to an example like, you know, you've got billions of people using an iPhone. You don't have billions of people investing in Apple. Um, just to reiterate what Tom is saying, we have two aspects to this. The Kinesis Velocity token, uh, which the entry point in, and the ticket price and the entry point there is is you know, quite high and it's going to attract a certain segment. And what we're really doing in marketing now is focusing on user acquisition um, in from the monetary system side of things, um, because obviously it's about stimulating the use of that monetary system that's going to obviously pay dividends uh, uh, in, in the respect of the Kinesis Velocity token yields and things like that. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to, you know, color uh, too much more in here because Tom's sort of really covered off you know, the aspects of where our focus is at the moment and obviously our technology coming closer and closer to fruition, we're going to now have an interface or we're now going to have an actual product to market. Um, and we can start to generate, you know, put put revenue and, and, and generate incomes and, and create and stimulate um, uh, use of the system as these things are rolled out. So, um, I mean, I think it's better, Tom, if you could just cover off on the partnerships before we head yeah, out. Yeah, sure. and, uh, I uh, just one element I wanted I uh, just one thing I wanted to cover while I've got the opportunity um, guys I can see all your questions here there's some great questions that are coming up on the on the chat here um, it's there's some interesting questions um, and some questions that really highlight you know that that a good strong follow-up email uh, is really needed so uh, post this webinar we will uh, I'll take all of these questions we'll get the team to sort of you know contribute um, try and answer them all where relevant uh, and then what I'll do is a bulk email out to everybody on this webinar try and get all of these questions answered so don't hold back um, put everything up there and uh, we'll try and uh, get through a lot of it uh, over to you Tom on partnerships okay thank you okay I'll cover off on two things firstly um, we've got some news coming out in the not too distant future we'll be announcing uh, um, a plethora of different things um, but we we announce everything um, at the right time as well so there's a lot of development going on behind the scenes a lot of partnerships being done that for whatever reason um, it might not be strategically beneficial for it to be in the public domain and we just ask for everyone to accept this um, ultimately, we're doing our best in a fast-moving, emerging industry to really uh, lock in all strategic benefits and advantages that we may have. And we're not going to flag post um, necessarily at all points in time exactly where we are. Um, I mean, we're in the developmental phase. What everyone should understand is that this solution will be launched and then we'll let the numbers talk for themselves. Okay, so let us bring everything together to get as strong as possible during this process. Um, and, you know, we can't be in this sort of live newsfeed sort of uh, position where, you know, giving commentary on our day to day um, 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 corporate activity. That way we would lose all strategic advantages that we would have as an organization, as a, as a corporation. 
um, and just flag post it to everyone else who we're potentially competing against. And considering, you know, exactly what we're doing and the dis disruptive nature of our company, um, it's not going to put us in a strong, strong position to be, you know, providing ongoing commentary of all of our development or of our, all of our partnerships. Um, in fact, you know, some of the biggest and most uh, powerful partnerships and, and developments that we have, they need to be kept under wraps for the time being. And we just hope everyone appreciates that. Um, these things will come to the fore in due course. But if, uh, and I, I, I can understand like the frustration and not knowing exactly what's going on, but I ask you to trust in our team and to understand that this is the best thing for the system and for our company that we're um, pretty, I'm, I'm sure almost everyone on this call is actually part of as a participant. Okay, so I want to comment on a few things. Um, we've put together like an all-star cast of an advisory committee, um, which I'll also comment why that's important from different perspectives. Um, hang on one second. Uh, and, uh, and also, um, and yeah, why, why that's important. And we're about to announce a number of different participants in this advisory committee. One in particular, which, okay, um, because it's not publicly announced yet, I won't name the actual name, but um, it's an ex-regulator uh, um, um, out of the United States. And so that, that that's provides, uh, you know, a lot of, I guess, influence and and, and uh, um, credibility to our organisation from various different perspectives. We've got members of royal families, royal families who have joined. Um, we've got some of um, the top players at the United Nations. Um, we've got uh, uh, a number of others who are um, some, you know, partners um, that we've we've gone ahead with out of spaces such as like healthcare, for example. You know, one, one is considered like the godfather of healthcare in the United States. We're about to do a release and name all these different names and get those out there. And, uh, and, 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 and what that actually does is one from, okay, the retail investor perspective, it provides a lot of credibility to these people are ultimately putting their names and reputations behind the company. And um, they're doing so um, mainly because, well, because they believe in the company and not for any other reason, actually. Um, second, from an institutional standpoint, it provides, uh, it provides a, a, a much easier sort of gateway to get through due diligence committees where in, a, in like a due diligence committee where pretty much everyone's employed to press the no button, this um, and if, if they don't press the no button at the right time, they lose their job. Um, this case, if when when you see big names, when you see credible names putting their name and reputation behind a certain organisation, it provides um, a lot easier ability for a due dilig for a due diligence team to actually press the yes button. So um, it assists in the due diligence process. And this is really helpful for us at the moment because we're having a lot of governmental, um, we're, we're doing governmental deals and we're doing institutional deals as well. Um, so moving on, uh, we, we have also been, you know, I mean, and this, some of these deals will be represented actually at some point um, in, the, in the KVT sales. Um, probably shouldn't have said that, but anyway, I said it. Um, so, you know, it might be um, investment deals into the company, institutional investment deals. It might be uh, partnership deals, et cetera, et cetera. But the deal flow is really, really coming in thick and fast. Um, and we're trying to sequentially prioritise it as far as, you know, Okay, we can only deal with onboarding a certain amount of partners at a certain point in time. And then there's a strategically correct time to go public with it. The next um, thing I want to talk to you about is, okay, so, um, yeah, I've mentioned um, that, you know, 
it's these deals are happening at the governmental and the institutional level. You all know about sort of our Indonesian ties. Um, that's been firmed up and um, uh, we, we will be sort of going live and, and going out to tens of millions of um, Indonesians and, and, and other users throughout the world through some of these um, partnerships. So um, partnership with like Jakarta Futures Exchange, um, PT POS, the post, post office, um, and there's a few more that will be coming out as well, which are very, very big deals. Um, in addition to that, we continue to work with um, um, a no number of other influential conglomerates, um, I would say, throughout Europe and also influential players. And this is um, really at the top level, at the royal family level, at the governmental level. Um, going, you know, it goes on from there. Once again, I'm not really in a position to provide deep details apart from, you know, you'll see statements come out in the public arena um, and we um, we appreciate your patience as far as that goes. So, um, yeah, from my perspective, just to sum it all up, um, I wanted to bring on, um, you know, different members of our executive committee. As you know, Andy's been with us um, since the very beginning, helping to get the word out there. Um, him and I are about to start the interviews again um, after quite a quiet patch. Um, and we're about to, you know, give it a good sort of um, little ramp up into the KVT close. Um, um, obviously, you know, um, you know, I'll, I'll talk about the KVT investment in a second. But, um, you know, I also wanted to bring online to show the, you know, the depth of the operation with our other team members as well and introduce, obviously, Patrick and Nigel and, um, you know, let everyone know that um, things are coming along really nicely from our perspective. Um, there's been a little bit of a uh, lull in the, the crypto industry, which is call it a crisis of confidence. That doesn't affect us in any way, shape or form. In fact, I'd say more than anything, it's been very welcomed by us because it's weeded out all this speculative hype. And to be honest, with the crash in the crypto markets, even some of these organizations who raised, you know, like maybe 20 million, 30 million, et cetera, going back in late 2017, early 2018, some of those were left holding their crypto assets. And with a 95% fall in crypto assets, they're left with basically no funding. So what that means is it's allowed organizations such as ourselves to really, um, because we're strong, to triumph over the others. Um, it's made our job easier. Let's put it that way. Um, and um, I think ultimately, no matter however you slice it, we'll be um, launching. And I think everyone's going to be happy with the solution that we launch. Um, I don't think anyone can complain with the partnerships that we've been putting together and um, they'll be steadily announced going forward into the future. Um, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm blown away by the partnerships that, that we're doing ultimately and the integrations that we're doing into millions of users, into tens of millions of users, and then to ultimately, you know, provide that ability to actually use Kinesis as a currency. Um, that's, that's the main thing. And to do their everyday banking, you know, money transfers, payments, whatever you like, you'll be able to do it through our system. Um, so let me, um, oh great, my, uh, my hotel phone is ringing. I'm here in Barcelona at the moment. So let me, let me sum up by saying that as everyone knows, there's not too long left to be investing in KVTs. Um, you make your own decision whether it's a good investment or not, but Forevermore, the KVT holders will receive 20% of the fees out of the system, of the top line revenue out of the system. So that's really, um, I mean, it's 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 an amazing investment. Um, and uh, you know, once these things are sold, they're sold. And um, let's just say there there are discussions underway to actually, you know, for large parties to invest in a lot of them. We've held back these this large interest 
Um, so it's not like the interest isn't there. It just, it requires a very, very significant decision on our behalf to sell a large percentage of the KVTs to say one party or a consortium of parties and give them such control. So we're trying to do the right thing by um, the system users. Um, we're trying to make it as fair system as possible. Ultimately, you know, it's the costs. We made a decision to have a high KVT cost, um, mainly because we knew that um, our system would require for KYC to be conducted um, for KVTs in most jurisdictions around the world or all jurisdictions around the world. And um, uh, there's costs associated with um, KYCing um, users. And with that being the case, and you know, there's obviously administration costs and everything like that, we didn't want there to be you know, such a small threshold for investment. So, um, you know, and put us into a cash flow negative position, which just weakens the company. We're corporate executives at the end of the day, and we understand that, okay, the, co the, comp the only way that the company survives is if, if the company actually makes money. So we're not going to be selling a KVT for a dollar um, if it costs, you know, 20, 30, 100 dollars to actually onboard that, that user, that investor. So um, with that in mind, that's the reason why we made KVTs at such a high like, price. Um, and we certainly have no regrets on that side. We've got the capital we require. Of course, we'd welcome more and we can do more with more. We can do, you know, like partnership, strategic partnership deals. We can have, you know, more market making capital, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, um, that's probably enough from me right now. Um, let me just say that, uh, yeah, thank you very much for joining the call. We tried to keep it short and sweet, but also run through where we are. I hope that um, you understand that uh, you know things are full steam ahead from our perspective and looking and looking very good. Um, it's a it's a, a clear seas ahead. So um, and we'll look to you know basically reconnect in the not too distant future. We probably should be doing it more, but everyone's been so busy on our end actually. Um, I'm going to be participating in, in things like the UN summits and that sort of thing. You might have seen that I participated in um, one UN summit. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm likely going to be co-chairing a uh, committee out of the United Nations. So you might see my face popping up in such forums going forward in the blockchain space um, and becoming more of a spokesperson, influential spokesperson in the space. So um, yeah, so uh, anyway, we look to reconnect. Very, very soon. Thank you very much for dialing in. Um, is there anything further anyone wants to say from our end? Jai, is, is that it from our end? Uh, I think from that end, uh, it ties up everything. Um, I have the questions from everybody, um, some good ones in there. And yeah, I think okay. uh, it's good. Perfect. So um, yeah, we've got your questions and we will endeavor to um, answer them uh, as soon as possible in a timely fashion. So thank you very much for everyone tuning in and look forward to talking again with you shortly. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. And thank yes, you. the recording will go out to everybody. OK. I head butted the light before. <laughs> anyway, we oh, yeah. go around butting things when you got a. Board.